Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here. Now, you may remember, a few weeks back, I actually did a video on um, a free cycle mother load which I got for uh, Retrofest. Well, there was a couple of items in that that I didn't show you because um, I was wondering about the usefulness for Retrofest and in the case of one of the items, a Nintendo GameCube, I'd been after one myself. Anyway, um, one of the items that I did get was this eMachines netbook. Um, this is kind of like an Acer Aspire 1, except it's uh, got Acer crossed out and eMachines written on in crayon. And um, this is the first netbook that um, I've ever owned. <laughs> there you have it. And it's also uh, the first e-machines that I've ever owned as well. Would you look at that? Um, now I know a lot of people are going to be like, e-machines. I've never really spoken. I don't think I've really spoken much about e-machines on this channel. Um, my relationship with uh, e-machines computers has not been the worst actually. I've got to be honest. Okay, I, you know, I'm very well aware that the never obsolete e-machines, you know, the original uh, Trigem ones, you know, they, they weren't that good. Um, I'm also very much aware of um, the number of e-machines computers that used the best tech uh, 250-12E power supplies. You know, the, those power supplies were literally firecrackers. You know, very, very, very unwise to use such a thing. But the computers themselves... They were simple. And in that simplicity, there wasn't really that much to go wrong. Um, you know, I, I, I reckon that, uh, you know, with hindsight, you know, anyone knows anything, you know, what we know now. You know, if people wanted to go out and buy an e-machine computer back in the 2000s, you know, I'd say, well, well that's absolutely fine if that's what you want to do. Just buy a new power supply just don't even <laughs> don't even bother with the best type one just to literally just kind of strip that thing out and put in something better seriously um but yeah no, i i i understand you know about cheap pieces of rubbish that don't actually work but um you know e-machines did make some machines that did work and worked quite well so, you know, that, that is my take on e-machines. Anyway, back to this netbook. So this tiny wee thing has got an Atom N450 CPU. Again, somewhat of a piece of crap, but it is 64-bit. So if I wanted to, I could install a uh, nice flavour of Lunix on here. Um, you know, 64-bit, something like Debian or, uh, you know... What else? Uh, you know, Ubuntu or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's also got a gigabyte of RAM and a 160 gig hard disk. I would say that um, this machine is 2009 vintage. And by the time this was made, eMachines was very much under the control of Acer. Anyway. Let's have a wee look at this machine, see what uh, she's got going for her. So, on the left hand side we have a an Ethernet port, I'm not sure if it's 10100 or if it's Gigabit. We have a VGA port, um, sad, sad to say it does not have the screws, sorry ML3, just doesn't. Um, also have two USB 2 ports. and. I'm going to have to move it away from the camera so I can see. Uh, microphone in, headphone out. Um, on the front, don't have anything. On the right hand side, we have um, we have this slot blank, which if you push it in, it reveals that, there were, that um, it belongs to a dummy SD card which was installed into the SD card reader on the side of this machine. Nice. I'm just going to pop that back. And then you have 
the uh, DCN and um, Kensington lock slot. So there really isn't much of anything. But then again, it's a netbook. Uh, for those of you who um, don't remember uh, the netbook craze of the late 2000s, early 2010s, basically what these machines were were very simple computers. I mean, they ran generally ran Windows XP and later on Windows 7 Starter. They were very low power and um, they were literally designed with portability in mind. Basically, you could kind of sling them into a bag of some sort and then just kind of, and then just, you know, take them, you know, put, get online with them. Um, you know, so basically you'd take it to a coffee shop and then, you know, just kind of powered it on and away you went. That's literally what they were for. Um, these have now largely been replaced by tablets and um, and convertibles. So stuff like my... Um, so basically a machine like my Asus Transformer. So in this video what I plan to do with this machine is... Um, I plan to restore it to the original factory settings, show you that process and then I intend to um, actually show you around the image, the installation of Windows XP. Um, this machine, this machine, when it came to me, it was very dusty, but um, I think it's cleaned up rather well. You know, I've been at it with a wet wipe, and, and look at it, I'm okay, there's a couple spots I've missed on the screen, but for the most part, it's pretty much almost brand new. I'm just going to show you here. And then if you look on the palm rest, you will see um, Intel Atom CPU. So that's kind of a 2008-2009 Intel sticker. Uh, designed for Windows XP, Energy Star. And then you've got, ten, then you've got the spec. So it has a 10.1 inch screen. Um, Intel Atom M450 processor clocked at 1.66 gigahertz. Uh, one gigabyte of RAM really isn't all that much nowadays. You probably want a wee bit more. Um, I think um, Elmo3 he has the uh, sister machine to this, the uh, an Acer. He has tried installing uh, eight gigs of RAM. Didn't he work? Uh, right. So uh, that that was a thing. Uh, you have a hard drive, 160 gig, and a three cell battery. Not sure what the battery life is. Um, can't imagine it would be that much anymore. See, this is the thing. I mean, you forget how old these machines actually are. Like, you know, this is, um, this machine is, you know, at the very least, eight years old. It's just madness to think, you know, and... You've got machines that, uh, you know, the desktops of the time are still very much usable. Alright, so uh, here we go. Now, if you want to restore this machine, you can go into the um, eMachines e-recovery management. Or, what you could alternatively do is restart your machine. Um, go to, uh, there we go. And then when you see the post screen, basically, because it is an Acer underneath, and uh, you'll definitely see signs of that in a minute. Um, because it is essentially an Acer machine, to uh, restore these old Acers, it's literally, you hold down Alt and press F10. Um, and then hopefully, there we go. Windows is loading files. Now even though this machine is uh, Windows XP, it is... It is... Um, does use the Windows 7 um, pre-installation environment. Well, actually, it's not Windows 7, it's, it's probably the Windows Vista pre-installation environment, actually, thinking about it. You know, given the age of the machine.
I think there was only maybe one or two netbooks that actually ran Windows Vista. Uh, one of them, I do believe, was uh, Hewlett Packard, and it was painful. See, the problem with Windows Vista is it was never designed with um, less power, powerful hardware in mind. Well, I don't know if it was designed that way, but certainly, I mean, considering that you really couldn't run something like that, uh, some, something like Windows Vista on a machine with, um, you know, that was only a few months old in some cases, these netbooks, you really have to, you really have to, um, you know, think what should be run on them, you know, especially if you're going to maximise the battery life and what have you. I mean, this has only got a single core 1.6 gigahertz processor. No one in the right mind should even think about putting Windows Vista on such a thing if they plan to run with it every day. So, as a result, Windows XP had a wee bit of a renaissance in the late 2000s because of the netbook. Because Vista just couldn't run with it. Anyway, so now we're at the uh, restore screen. I can completely restore the system to factory default or restore the operating system and retain the user data. No, I just want to I just want to start again, start again. See, I've I've actually already restored this system once um to get rid of the previous owner's uh, files and what have you. Um but um so you know, none of those are on here in a way that I can quickly get to them. I mean, obviously, the only way to securely, 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 securely erase um, said files would be to set about the hard disk with a hammer. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to keep and use a hard disk, you'd use DBAM. Anyway, um, so I've said to restore the operating system and, you know, just restore the uh, machine to factory settings. It's shown me how it's going to partition the system. It's going to have um, a partition label OS and partition size 130 gigabyte. And then it's going to say, um, this action will er erase all existing data on partition label OS. Press OK to continue or press cancel to leave. Or abort, rather. Leave. Okay, now it's saying, please wait a moment. And this brings me on to the first thing about this machine. It, is, it does seem to be very slow in the recovery program. I mean, I've seen e-machines, like, you know, I was working on um, a Windows Vista e-machine computer, that was a uh, laptop that had an Intel Pentium D in it, or was it an Intel Pentium Dual Core? I can't even mind. Um, it was a dual core Pentium anyway, and you know, it was very responsive. Now, this restore program might look a wee bit familiar. You've probably seen it when I was restoring the um, Acer Aspire 5742. You've probably also seen it when I was restoring the Packard Bell Easy, uh, Packard Bell, uh, Easy note dot a um, and the reason for that is this is an Acer restore program <clears throat> Acer own e machines and Packard Bell and basically what they've done I mean there's really no sense in doing anything else. What they've done is taken their own recovery routine and, you know, rebranded it as needed. So, obviously, for the Packard Bell dot, you know, it'd say Packard Bell. And for the Acer, it would say Acer. But for this one, it's E-Machines. Anyway, I'm going to leave this to go. This will take um, a few minutes. So, in the meantime, this is a good time to go and have a cup of tea. 
After not too long an amount of time, this machine seems to be restored. Now, what we're going to do is um, we'll click exit on here and then hopefully this will restart into Windows XP. Now, on Windows 7, that what happens with this machine is, um, well, on Windows 7, what happens with Acer and Packard Bell machines is it goes and installs everything it needs and then gives you the out-of-the-box experience. Whereas on this Windows XP machine, uh, it does it the other way around. You get the out-of-the-box experience, then you get spat out to a desktop, which is mostly set up, but then the um, but then the uh, recovery process kicks back in and installs a few updates and drivers and whatnot. Kind of odd, but um, again, I don't think that takes too long. I think uh, <clears throat> the longest. Uh, win prep process I've ever seen has probably got to be on well it's a toss up between Pack, uh, Packard Bells of Old and the uh, IBM and Lenovo uh, Think Vantage rescue and recovery process okay so what we've got here is um the out of the box experience for uh, Windows XP. Uh, I do believe this is Service Pack 3. I have had some systems that were Service Pack 2 where the out of the box experience did not include the music, which is a wee bit of a shame. But um, this one does, actually. You'll hear that in a wee minute. The screen on this machine, I've got to say, is very good, and um, it turns out the reason for that is it's an LED backlit screen. Okay, so I'm going to set up Windows XP. Um, yeah, everything's set to United Kingdom. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And, yeah, I've got to agree with all of this. Help protect my PC by turning on automatic update now. Right, because this is Windows XP Home, um, you're given the option to change your computer's name during setup. Um, it would be nice if XP Pro gave you that option as well, actually. But, um, okay, so that's, uh, so that's done. Taking it sweet old time. There, oh, there we go. Checking your internet connectivity. Uh, internet connection could not be chosen. Ah, yeah, that's because uh, I I completely forgot to uh, plug in the LAN cable. Ah, oh, well, ready to register with Microsoft? Nope, already did that. No, seriously, I <laughs> I ran through this uh, recovery process just once before. Um, yeah, just to see how it went myself uh, before making this video and during that time I did actually you know for the for the yucks I did actually register this copy of Windows um, I'm J obviously wait a minute is this yeah okay try again okay so now we are finished with the out-of-the-box experience. 
Um, again, this is taking its time, but uh, because I changed the name of the computer during setup, what's going to happen now is the machine is going to restart and then we will end up in Windows XP. So now that's Windows XP loading. Copyright Microsoft Corporation. Microsoft. That brings back memory seeing Windows XP on a... the Windows XP logo on a widescreen. That's... Uh, <laughs> that's nostalgia. In a way. This is taking its sweet old time. I would not be too surprised if this hard disk was on its way out. Um, in fact, I should probably take a look at that. Um, you know, I can I can run Crystal Disk Info, and that should be able to tell me if I am with the hard disk. Luckily, I can make a recovery CD for this machine. I find it uh, quite amusing that a netbook would give you that option um, considering that uh, there's no CD drive with it. <laughs> but then back in the late 2000s a lot of computers still had optical drives installed in them so you know we really weren't kind of used to life without them back then. But uh, nowadays, you know, everything is, you know, make a USB key for this or, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's, um, optical drives are dying. But, you know, on a netbook, I can totally understand because, I mean, the whole idea of a netbook was that it was small and simple and just basically a gateway to the internet. And anyway... There is an optical drive. It's right here. And it's connected to the netbook. <laughs> so, anyway, that's us at the desktop. Nice. That's, uh, that's the start menu. So, now what's happening here is um, the last minute programs are being installed. Um, what I can show you, though, is uh, we can take a tour around the start menu. Um, and already I can tell you that Internet Explorer... Eight, uh, well, it, it could even be seven actually. Probably is seven actually, because I believe eight came out around the same time as Windows Seven. It's quite confusing. Um, yeah, Internet Explorer, a newer version than what came with XP, is installed. Also, Media Player. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say version eleven, or it could be version ten. Which is, uh, nah, probably, I'd probably be more likely to say 11, actually. Um, got the usual Windows accessories. E-Machines. You have the uh, E-Machines recovery program. If I go into that. Probably take a couple of minutes. Games are, uh, games. Uh, the um, computer still loading stuff. Um, so I can create a new recovery default disk or create drivers and applications disk. Um, I can even, you know, put a password on here or I could use this to either, cl um, I could actually use this to restore the system as well. Um, completely restore the system to, um, Factory defaults, restore operating system, and retain user data, reinstall drivers and applications. So that's good. I can do all that. Um, what else can I do with it? Um, E-Machines games. Can't really imagine that uh, these are going to be... Playable, if I'm going to be totally honest. Let's see. Um, 
So let's see if I put uh, baseball and this may take a minute. Blah blah blah. What's what's going to happen here? Oh, baseball free. So you get a free session. So I guess it's just you play the once. So it's basically this was kind of the forerunner to um, the Wild Tangent games that um, would start to appear on computers. I don't really like this. Basically, they load your system down with trialware. That's not really that cool. Uh, then you've got... Um, then you've got um, the regular games, which includes more trialware gubbins. Intel Matrix Storage Console. Uh, Microsoft Office, again, this is a trial. Um, actually, at the time, what uh, what you would find would happen would be um, you could buy Microsoft Office key cards, as it were, uh, from places like PC World, and basically yeah, most places that sold computers or computer software. You could literally buy um, a scratch-off card um, that if you scratched off the back, you would get the product key to a version of Office. So I'm guessing this is uh, like Home and this Office Home, you know, one of the Home and Student or what have you. Um, so what you would do, you'd start up Word, it would ask for the product key, and then you'd key in the one that you got from the scratch card. Obviously, that would cost you extra. But, you know, it was all there and installed. If you wanted to install Office Professional, then, yeah, you'd be best off uninstalling this and installing that. If you didn't want Office, there's Microsoft Works 9 on here. Nice. Um, then you've got Norton Internet Security. Uh, a lot less nice. That, too, is Trialware. Why do they put these things on here? Norton Online Backup. No thanks. Um, Skype, yep, back in the day they used to give you an an installer for Skype. Very old version, completely irrelevant now. Startup. Um, webcam, basically uh, drivers for the webcam. Uh, Windows Live. Yep, do you remember when that was a thing? Um, Ac uh, Adobe Reader 9. Uh, PowerPoint Viewer. 2007 and um, that's pretty much it as far as uh, a lot of applications go oh sugar <laughs> I guess I guess we have um, I guess we have undead pixel here <laughs> rip oh well what can you do it was a free laptop but um, yeah, so this is um, this is the e machines uh, machine. So I think uh, what I will do is um, I'll probably I think I will end this video now. There's really not much else to show. Um, you know, I might come back if I do anything more with the machine, and uh, you know might even give uh, a wee up to you know update as to what's going on with it uh, but for the time being I'm going to sign off this video so thank you all for watching thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed it and would like to see more please consider subscribing to the Flying Scotsman YouTube channel if you're looking for more things The Flying Scotsman, you can also follow The Flying Scotsman YouTube channel Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. To see my latest video, click on the link within the browser window. In the meantime, thank you for watching and please do feel free to join me for my next video. Cheerio bye.